Now, the Christian Association of Nigeria can, on Monday, pleaded with the federal government to deploy every necessary resources at its disposal to ensure that all Christians in the captivity of Boko Haram and Islamic State West Africa province, Iswap, are freed. Khan said the latest attacks are evidence of Christian persecution in Nigeria. In a statement by the president of Khan, Reverend Samsin Ayokunle, signed by his special assistants and media and communications, Pastor Adebayo Oladiji in Abuja, the Christian body stated that the chairman of Christian Association of Nigeria in Michika Adamawa State, Reverend Lawan Andimi, was abducted by Boko Haram terrorists last week when they invaded the predominant Christian community. The innocent cleric, in a video footage released by his captors, has been making an appeal to the federal government, the Adamawa state governor, and the leadership of Khan to come to his aid. The Christian body further called on the federal government and all the security agencies to expedite actions with a view to secure release of all hostages and to ensure adequate security in all the affected Christian communities that have become the targets of criminals. Now, joining us in the studio, um, is a reputation manager to Boston Akeju. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Now, the Boko Haram seems to be deploying another tactic with the kidnap of the uh, Khan chairman. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that to uh, an extent, um, the Boko Haram um, 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 have been partly uh, uh, decimated and there is an attempt to become media worthy again and they are choosing soft targets and I think that it has to be seen that way um, be, with this um, ad abduction of, of Christian considering that it came at a time very close to when um, 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 the, the United States had released a report about the religious tolerance in Nigeria, uh, I think it's an attempt to, you know, be in the news again, um, and it's also an indication to the federal government that while they might have been decimated, they have not been properly, properly put to the back. You know, a lot of work still has to be um, to be done to keep, you know, to keep them really, really much um, away. Is there a possibility that this could trigger a religious crisis, considering the fact that this is, I think, among the few times that we've seen a cleric it, well, been put on the spot to issue a video pleading for his release? Will much come out of this? I think it's 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 a very tricky one, and the onus is on both Khan, um, Murik, and all the other um, religious body and federal government and his you know agencies to ensure that this is carefully um, handled. I say this because. If you understand, you know, how terrorists work, they usually want to have a lot of media equity, you know. And so anything that they know will spike and, you know, will increase violence. We get people talking about them, you know. They tend, you know, to do that. Uh, in this particular case, um, if, if, we, if we roll back to a few years ago, two, three years ago, uh, the Boko Haram wasn't attacking only churches. They were attacking everywhere, mosques, you know. Um, Doctrine both Christians and Muslims, um, and so the agenda was clear that it wasn't, you know, a fight. It wasn't against Christian. Everybody became a victim of it. If we allow an issue, the Boko Haram, to plant a seed of discord among Christians and Muslims, then the 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 um, the 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 the, 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 the the effect of violence is going to be on everybody, which is what yeah, but they it, want. They've already sold a code of dispute between Christians and Muslims. They've been trying to pit Christians and Muslims against each other. Yes, that's what I'm saying. They, they shouldn't, we shouldn't allow them to succeed. This is not a Christian or Muslim fight. This is Boko Haram against the people of Nigeria. And I think that even Khan and everybody will have to, you know, be very, very careful not to allow them to succeed in this agenda to pitch. So you know, do you Muslim see negotiation, against. real negotiation in this case for the release of this man? And should really the federal government, we've talked about the issue of negotiation and the effect it might have if you have a government that on the one hand says, I will not negotiate with terrorists, and then we have situations like this that require a certain level of negotiation. What, what, what? Well, 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 while I'm not um, completely um, a security expert, 
that in um, the issue of negotiation and ab abduction, I think that um, strategic thinking is always useful in situations like this. If you, you, you know, there's a saying that I would rather, you know, lose a battle and win the war than, you know, win the battle and ultimately lose the war. Negotiation with the terrorists to ensure that we don't have a bigger breakdown of law and order might be the right way to go in the immediate term while we're still trying to fight. It is the fact they may have been decimated, but they still have strong goals. We've seen videos during Christmas and New Year of, you know, real gunfire exchange and battlefront um, in, some, in some northern part of the country, which is an indication that, you know, the Boko Haram uh, militia are still very much fortified, even if there's a claim that they are not holding or there's an argument about if they're holding any territory in Nigeria, but they're still very much, you know, formidable, if you get what I'm saying. So we should not allow the objective of the Boko Haram to sow a seed of discord between Christians and Muslims to succeed. And the onus is on all the stakeholders, including Christians, Muslim, and the federal government, to ensure that they don't succeed in, in doing that, which is the bigger objective for a nation like Nigeria. So everything has to be done to prevent that while you're trying to secure, you know, the Let's talk about the insurgency fight. From what you've said so far, it looks like you see some improvement in the fight against the insurgency yeah. when it comes to, to Boko Haram. But in this new year, what should be the focus? Focus. We still have this abduction and other abductions that needs to be addressed. But going forward in the fight, what areas do you think that more effort should be expended as to what we have now. I think that there has to be a lot of um, 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 mind, mindset change campaigns. Um, um, the, the, the government ha will have to deploy a lot of work um, in making sure that they change the mindset so that it becomes absolutely very difficult, you know, for Boko Haram to continue to recruit people while you're decimating them. Um, I think that the security, the intelligent part of our security has to be very, 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 very 21st century and up to, you know, um, up to date in fighting the insurgency. It's not only by fighting on the war front. You know, there has to be a lot of um, intelligence gathering that is preventive and, you know, towards, you know, the goal of completely putting these guys out or making it look like, you know, you have no place, you know, here. Um, I think that those are the most important things to do because there, there, there are intelligence will allow you to know that this already you don't even need intelligence anymore to see that they've considered the Christian part of the country as a soft target and you know a lot of work has to be put in place to prevent them from continuing um, you know to do that thank you very much thank for you sharing for your thoughts with us thank you all right we continue with the news now